The Holy Ghost is Jehovah. It's Pastor Wagner, and this is my weekly video blog. Today I want to talk about the fact how the Holy Ghost is Jehovah God. He is the third person, the member of the Trinity. And I know the word Trinity is not found in the Scripture, but the concept is, and that's what I want to show you today, and specifically that the Holy Ghost is part of that Trinity. A core text would be 1 John 5 and verse 7. Where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I love this verse. It just plainly and succinctly states that God is three persons, yet one God. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now some people might say, well yes, these are three aspects of God, or three um, offices of God. But these are not just aspects of God. These are not offices of God. These are three distinct entities and persons. And I will prove that presently. These are not just aspects. They are persons of the Godhead. The same person can't bear witness as a holder of different offices and have all the testimonies count as different testimonies. You see, if I myself, I work part-time as a math tutor and I'm a preacher. So if I was called into a court of law as a witness and I come up and I'm, I testify as the preacher. I couldn't be, I couldn't sit down and then have the lawyer call me back up again and testify as the math tutor. I'm the same person. I can't testify twice and witness to the same thing as just two different offices or two different aspects of my person. It has to be two or more different persons to testify two or more different testimonies. Jesus proved this to the Pharisees when he showed that he and his father were two different persons. He said in John eight thirteen through 18, The Pharisees therefore said unto him, thou, bear, thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. You see that? Two men, Jesus says. The testimony of them is true. I am one that beareth that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. You see from that text there, to bear record and to bear witness are the same thing. First John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Jesus says it has to be a testimony of two different men or two different persons to bear, to bear record. Now, though Jesus and the Father were two different persons, they're one God. John, in John 10, 30-33, says, I and my Father, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Now, the Jews knew exactly what he meant. When he said, I and my Father are one, they knew that he was claiming to be God. And I'll prove it to you. Their response proves it to you. Verse 31, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, and sa answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. When Jesus said, I and my Father are one, they knew that he was claiming to be one with God, that he and the Father, two persons, were one God. They knew that that's what he was saying. What does 1 John 5, 7 say? For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Why would John 10, uh, 30 through 33, mean when Jesus said, I and my Father are one, why would that mean that they are two distinct persons, yet one God? But 1 John 5, 7 would not mean the Father, the Holy, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are three distinct persons, yet one God. It does mean that. That's exactly what it means. That's exactly the way it is with the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. 1 John 5, 7. I keep going back to 1 John 5, 7. Some people don't like that. They don't think it's enough. They think we, we need more verses that say virtually the same thing, as if when God says something once, it's not good enough. All he needs to say is once. That's all he needs to say. But he's, he's told us that many times in different ways. But 1 John 5, 7 just says it so succinctly. But let's look at some other verses. The Holy Ghost is elsewhere declared to be God. 
going to do a couple comparisons here. First, I'm going to go to the book of Acts, and then I'm going to do a couple of comparisons with the Old and New Testament, quote it when, when the apostles quote the Old Testament. I'm going to prove it that way also. But in Acts chapter 5, 3 through 4, this is when all the disciples were selling their goods and they were giving them to the apostles to be distributed under the church. Ananias and Sapphira kept back part of the price of the land that they sold, but pretended they gave the whole thing. And Peter says in verse 3, But Peter said, Ananias, why, has, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Peter says that Ananias lied to the Holy Ghost. But let's keep reading. Next verse. While as it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Peter said that Ananias lied to the Holy Ghost, and in the next verse then he says he lied to God. Put it together. The Holy Ghost is God. That's who Ananias lied to. Let's look at the old, let's look at a couple um, quotes from the New Testament and compare them in the Old Testament, and we'll see that the Holy Ghost is Jehovah God, the one true God. Paul says in Hebrews 3, 7 through 11, he says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, so Paul attributes what he's about ready to quote here is the Holy Ghost saying it. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, and pr tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Paul says the Holy Ghost said that. Now, who said that? Let's look back in Psalm 95, where Paul's quoting from, and let's see who said that. Paul said it was the Holy Ghost that said it. Psalm 95, 6 through 11. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. The Lord, all caps, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That means in the King James Bible, Jehovah. The Lord God, Jehovah. That's who's speaking here. Verse 7, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. This is Jehovah saying, they tempted me, proved me, saw my work, Jehovah says. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart. They have not, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Paul said the Holy Ghost said that. You look back in Psalms, it's the Lord God Jehovah saying it. Put it together, the Holy Ghost is the Lord God Jehovah. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Let's look at one more text. Hebrews 10, 15 through 17. Paul says again, Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. But Paul said it was the Holy Ghost that said it. The Holy Ghost is the Lord. Paul's correct. I will put my law, my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Now let's turn back to Jeremiah and see who spoke those words. Paul said it was the Holy Ghost that said it. Let's see what Jeremiah says. Jeremiah 31, 33 through 34. And this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, all in caps. That's Jehovah. I will put my law into their, into their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. This is Jehovah. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the Lord Jehovah speaking. Paul said the Holy Ghost said it. Put it together once again. The Holy Ghost is the Lord God Jehovah. He is the third person of the Godhead. 1 John 5, 7, I'm going to read it again. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. These three di distinct 
entities and persons, all three are God and they bear witness that Jesus is the Son of God. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you again next week.